There's a new internet historian video. Let's check it out. 40 minutes. Okay, let's watch it. We'll start it. We'll see how we feel. Wow, the Costa Concordia. Sub cruise? Every sub, we're gonna go on a cruise in the Costa Concordia together. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years. He knows exactly what to- Goated, dude. Goated. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vanamon, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and- How the fuck, dude? How the fuck you get away with two separate cruise ship crashes? That's crazy. I can imagine, maybe, in a generous and kind world, you make one. One crash and you say, look, it's been my dream to be a captain. I love being a captain. The sea is my calling. I have studied what went wrong. I'm ready. Please let me go back to sea again. I, it won't happen again. <laughs> but you do too? And they still give you the captain of a brand new $570 million ship? It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. <laughs> the locals hate it, but the customers love it. And it's a tradition. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Gilio. Okay. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. <laughs> Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. <laughs> Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter. It's so crazy. This happens a lot in a lot of different contexts where um, rich people or rich investors will spend millions and millions of dollars <laughs> on something like a boat. And then they're like, wow, that was expensive. Let's skimp on all the like the recurring costs. They'll spend infinite amount of money on the fixed costs, like the one-time thing of buying the boat. And they're like, all right, we're gonna pay almost as, as little as we possibly can for the employees to run it. The captain okay. is giving more orders. Okay. Going gently to 310, increase speed to 16 knots. Going this what? fast is going to be a fatal error. Why but increase the speed? before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. <laughs> because at this point, the captain says 325, but the helmsman relays 315. <laughs> so the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335, <laughs> which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. <laughs> the helmsman confirms 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. <laughs> a okay. few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. <laughs> Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia right now is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back, 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. Dude, imagine the feeling he's getting when he's like, fuck, am I gonna crash it again? <laughs> 350, I cannot sink three. Three is too many. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot sink three of these bad boys. <laughs> now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're Two is enough. Rudder instructions. Port ten, but the helmsman only gets to port five before another order is given. Two seconds later, port twenty. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. Oh. But then, oh no! One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible no. moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of poor, <laughs> undoing the swing. No! Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. Oh, imagine, dude, what a throw, what a choke. <sighs> dude, I can't even imagine the f***ing feeling. It's gotta be so intense in that room, everybody yelling. <laughs> and you're just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like you almost hope nobody noticed. I, I did it. I did port like you said. 
<laughs> oh, that's so fucked. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Collision. Oh. <laughs> Not a third one. Not a third one. What's crazy is that they're like, don't they have the capability to fucking break? I guess not, right? What are you gonna do? You can't, you can't easily slow these things down. I, I was, you can't like toss four anchors down and just, but it would just rip the, it would just rip the ship, right? There's too much inertia, yeah. You know what? I mean, <laughs> judging by what I said, I probably would have not been a great choice for captain either. <laughs> break! Break, damn you! Hit the brake! Where's the brake pedal? <laughs> On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. Okay, that's and good. they are now break. adrift. Close the water They're drifting? Doors stern. Holy shit. So what you're telling me is this is the greatest Tokyo drift of all time? That actually the captain's got an amazing amount of swag? Or maybe he was sick of it being called a Tokyo Drift and wanted to call it the Italian Drift. <laughs> when the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially though are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. Oh, that's unfortunate. These main generators give power to the whole ship. Damn, so you know what? Let's say if you were smarter, I mean, not smarter, but let's say you were like, I know that I'm gonna hit these rocks. I'm an idiot, I'm gonna hit these rocks. The smart thing to do would have been almost to go head on. Or get the front part to scrape, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. We'll table that idea. All right, we'll table that idea. All right. I'm just, I'm proposing ideas here, okay? There's no wrong ideas in a crisis, okay? All I'm saying is, okay, ma'am, you slam into the rocks, bam, crunch! The front part starts sinking, but you're safe. The engines are solid. Then you just back out well maybe all right maybe the scrape slows your boat down so you try to like like and it like lowers your momentum you scrape the full front right and then it, you, you lose your speed so you're back to like a tactical scrape yeah thank you thank you chat finally some of you it's a tactical scrape how about this see how this is sort of slanted like a ramp okay you curve the boat into this and you ramp it Suddenly, not only are you not are you not drifting, you're fucking it, and then you then, <laughs> then you honk the horn. Mid-flight, dude. So now your cruise ship is fucking soaring through the air. It's the greatest flyby of all time. Everyone in the fucking island stops and claps. Captain, here everything is lost. <laughs> the electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. Oh no. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Passenger. <laughs> He's so desperate not to. He keeps trying to minimize. That's so funny. Dude, you gotta know. It's, it's funny because you are the most qualified captain to know when a cruise ship is gonna sink. Nobody else has your experience. You've been around this board twice. You should be like, oh yeah, this is familiar. <laughs> this is actually, I actually, I'm getting deja vu right now. <laughs> We're coming down. Like you, this is your moment to shine, dude. Bang, 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 bang. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed oh my God. from the bridge. Imagine telling someone things are all right. <laughs> the fucking boat's half underwater. Till... Things are good, actually. Hey, <laughs> let's hit the pool. All right, hit the boss. Get a mojito. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. 
He gives up and starts helping passengers. Who's this guy? Scatina Wait, who's this guy? To, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races toward one of the... Damn, that's a chatted mayor. The mayor shows up, races onto the ship? <laughs> that's a Sigma male. That's a Sigma male right there. Re-elect him, please. Yeah, imagine de Blasio, dude. <laughs> I, I can't think of a single mayor that I know of in America that would fucking run up on a sinking ship to try and save people. Fucking Ted Cruz abandoned ship. <laughs> Insta. <laughs> Got a little chilly and Ted Cruz fucking dip. Uh, it's so funny. And the funniest part, dude, I think it's so funny that... <laughs> He tried to throw his daughters under the bus. I think that's so... It's like this captain. It's so similar to this captain, actually. It's like, I don't want to deal with the negative consequences of what I did. So I'm just going to say anything. I think that's so funny. Because it's so easily disprovable. No one buys it. Tells everyone to leave and take radios. But not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Wait, what? Dimitri Christidis and Sylvia Koronica leave with him. The maitre d' and some more can both- He changed into a suit? <laughs> I'm not the captain. <laughs> I'm, as, I'm as appalled as everyone else here. I'm a business traveler. And believe me, I'll have some words with whoever is the captain. This thing has been a disaster. <laughs> For, he's trying to do the hitman. He's literally doing the Agent 47. <laughs> You shoot like 14 people and then you just fucking put on a different hat. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> it's drip or drown and he ain't drowning. I That is a comment of the day. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. You have won my chat comment of the day. That's fucking funny. <laughs> People died. 30 people died, all right? There's no time for laughter. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. <laughs> I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. <laughs> DeFalco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board. <laughs> And the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses. So the captain makes it to shore. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's, I'm so glad this video was made. I'm so glad this video was made. This guy needs more public shaming. <laughs> then he goes to the harbor master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Hey, harbor master. <laughs> you know me? I've been here before. Let's do the motions. All right, what do I see? <laughs> I sit there again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've heard this speech. Don't crash the ship. Crashing the ship is bad. I get it. Okay. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. <laughs> the captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? <laughs> we were the last to leave the ship. No, you weren't. People are still on board as he's giving it? On Sunday morning. Wait, people are still on board as he's giving an interview to the news. That's crazy. That, that's crazy. Yo, Ted Cruz, new best friend, dude. These are boys. The cap and captain. A South Korean couple is found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slept through the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. Jesus. Found. I will say, sleeping through a crash is. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a deep sleep, dude. You know what, though? I mean, obviously, I. F the captain. Obviously. Obviously. But just to zoom out, you. I'm almost. I am equally mad. At the the whatever billionaire owner or investors put into this thing and decided let's fucking skip let's buy the cheapest fucking linesman and a captain that's had two crashes and fucking let's let's corruptly promote the security guard like at the end of the day there's always gonna be fucking idiots this guy's a fucking cowardly idiot but it's not like it was a it was a shocker it's not like he had a great track record and they were like it's like it's obviously for 
and short-term profit. As well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. They stole it was the never bell. Found. <laughs> Who steals a big fuck off <laughs> bell? Even the server. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, which one of you did it, dude? Fess up. I know one of you is watching my stream, and right next to your second monitor, you have the fucking bell in your room. Fess up. Costa Crochier would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. What? Costa Crochier is now off the hook for all criminal liability for- That's- that's corruption. That's absolute corruption. Holy f that judge was bought off, dude. 1 million fine, f 4 million for the judge behind the scenes. What the fuck? That's crazy. That's corrupt as f Fuck. <laughs> I will cause you a boatload of trouble is fucking funny. <laughs> that's that's wherewithal, dude. That's the that's fucking dropping little dubs. <laughs> not one miss, not a single miss I've ever seen from this guy. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rye magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak <laughs> Italian. <laughs> But God damn it, he must have some kind of charisma going on. Wait, what? I have no idea what it says. I don't speak Italian. Oh. <laughs> Mama mia, this a tomato sauce is a too spicy. <laughs> that seems a little. <laughs> Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. It's funny. I mean, uh... I don't know how I feel about this guy, Helmsman Jacob, getting a year in jail. I mean, it doesn't, you know, whatever, end of the day, he fucked up, but it's like they hired a bad, <laughs> like, someone should be in jail for hiring him. Then it was Jacob's turn, and he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, wait, we still want that witness testimony, he just scarped again. And he hasn't been found since. After that, <laughs> Guess it didn't matter. I was trying to stick up for him. I was trying to be like, you know what? Putting that guy in jail for a year. <laughs> <laughs> he said, fuck up, I'm outside the system, dude. Sigma male, classic. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking frame one, dude. Start the timer. That's, that's actually nine head. That's nine head, because you don't want to wait that extra day. It's going to cost you at the end. You want to get going. Get moved, that's a speed run. It was a four day towing journey to the docks where a two year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. Scatino was busy. Korean family just wakes up. <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> where is everybody? Fantastic video. Fantastic video. Internet historian does it again. That was a, that was a banger. That 40 minutes flew by, I mean, that was very interesting. I love all the research he did.